uh, a machine or using the human machine, the process is the same. You need to understand the problem or the objective that you're trying to achieve. And if you don't, you're not likely to be very successful in that. The difference is that when you are doing research and information gathering for things like social engineering, you're much more likely to go through the trash than you are to go through a lot of other things because people are often very careless. In addition to that, uh, there's planning, of course. Once you understand your objective or you understand the problem, it's nice to go ahead and put together a plan of how you would like to achieve your objective, how you want to attack the problem. Uh, next is a video of using a plan. Let's turn the volume up just a little bit. Ah! Us. I hate to imagine what the rest of your plan was. How did you get in? Far less effective on a second floor landing. I have an alarm. You do. And your code is your birthday. You might as well take all your valuables and put them right out on the lawn. Anyway, so I, I think it's important to have a plan, not only if you're trying to achieve these kind of objectives with other individuals, but also to have a plan with the, the way that you would like to not be social engineered by other people. Uh, the next one is the approach. When you are approaching someone to perform some kind of social engineering, or someone approaches you, uh, you want to make sure that you don't ruin your plan by giving anything away. Uh, and then the delivery, making sure that you follow your plan, but also have a plan that's adaptable enough that you can kind of work on the fly and change things around to meet the needs that you have. And lastly, extrication getting out, uh, preferably without setting off any alarms or red flags. Uh, and then I have another video to show a quick example of this. Some of you may have seen this film. All your hair! Drafting. He even has little payroll envelopes. Put it down. To himself from Put it there. down. Drop it! Relax! You're late, all right? My name's Alan, Barry Allen, United States Secret Service. Your boy just tried to jump out the window. My partner has him in custody. I don't know what you're talking about. What, you think the FBI are the only ones? I mean, come on. Come on, he's dabbling in government checks here. I've been following a paper trail on this guy for months now. Hey, you, you mind taking that gun out of my face? Please, really. I mean, it makes me nervous. You see some credentials. Yeah, sure. Take my whole wallet. <clears throat> you want my gun, too? Come over here, take my gun. Hey, hey, look, just do me a favor. Take a look outside. Look, look out the window. My partner's walking into the car as we speak. Look. Old guy almost pissed in his pants when I came through the door. He jumped right through the window onto the hood of my car. Hey, Murph. Yeah, call the LAPD again. I don't want people walking through my crime scene. I didn't expect the Secret Service on this. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> well, what's your name? Henry. Kyle Henry. Mind if I see some identification? Sure. You, know, you never can be too careful these days. Well, tough luck, Carl. Five minutes earlier, you would have landed yourself a pretty good collar. Sorry. Right. Ten seconds later, and you'd have been shot. Mind if I come downstairs with you? I, I gotta take a look at this guy. Sure thing. Just uh, do me a favor and sit tight for a second while I get this evidence downstairs. You know, I don't want some maid walking through here and making the bed. LAPD should be here any sec. Wait. Your wallet. You hang on to it for a minute. I trust you. So that's some uh, pretty incredible delivery and uh, obviously some talented acting as well. But uh, being able to adapt and observe on the fly, he was able to understand that one of the normal things that law enforcement officers would do to one another is ask for identification. So he used that actively in that kind of thing. So uh, there are a number of things that are part of the, the different components of social engineering. One is preloading, getting the conversation ready before it even starts. Uh, this is very common in advertising. Uh, some of the, the things that you might see in perhaps a, a commercial for drinks is people are always partying. I don't know if you're aware of this, but just opening a drink doesn't start a party at your house or invite your friends over. But that preloads the conversation almost every time you see one of those advertisements. 
the next is pretexting, and that is the assumption of a rule, which may or may not be deceptive. Uh, in this particular video that you just saw, it certainly was. But you can also pretext something that you are. Uh, elicitation is drawing answers out from people. Sometimes that's asking a direct question. Like I can ask Russell Fisher, why in the world do you like doing the wave at Yapsi? Or I could say, hey, Russell, I noticed that you did the wave at Yapsi yesterday and let him take it from there. I think that probably both of those things would be very effective to get some information out of him. Uh, sometimes you have to choose the right method for you. Uh, the next one is framing. Each one of us as a human being has our own frame of reference, our own worldview. And in you, things are different than they are for other people. Uh, we also have little sub views of different things. The way that we deal with certain situations is common to us, but not necessarily common to other people. Understanding how someone frames their own environment or being able to bring someone into a particular frame that they already possess is very valuable. The, the next uh, component is report, which is like uh, your, how much you're liked, how likable you are. How many of you are liking me right now? <laughs> OK. A couple. Maybe we can try to improve that. Uh, if you're likable, people are much more likely to do what you would like them to do. And you're much more likely to do things for people that you like. It's just the way we work. Uh, next is observation and listening. If you listen very carefully to what other people say and what, watch what they do, <laughs> Act, you're far more likely to understand how you need to interact with them. Uh, and then the last one, of course, is influence. You need to be able to use some kind of influence on someone as part of social engineering, whether it is getting them to perform a particular action or getting them to not perform a particular action or getting them to believe in a particular way or change their opinion in some circumstance. That is you uh, culminating the social as part of the influence. And sometimes this is manipulation for you know, nefarious purposes, and sometimes it's used for good things. Uh, social engineering is used in a lot of different ways, and we all use it pretty much every day. We just don't think of it in that particular way. Uh, now, as far as talking about instruction sets, the human machine is a little bit more complex than, say, the Perl compiler, in that we require a little bit different motivation. In Perl, you just tell the compiler what you would like it to do, and it does it. In uh, asking a human to do something, say, make me a sandwich, it's not very likely to happen unless you have a really good reason. So what are the reasons that we do things? Uh, the first, of course, is authority. Uh, I like to liken this to the you're not the boss of me from elementary school. How many of you use that? <laughs> All the time, right? My kids say that. You're not the boss of me. Uh, it turns out that when someone is the boss of you or threatens to tell the boss of you, you're far more likely to do something that they want. Uh, the next one is avoidance, and I've got a short clip about that. Yeah, who's this? What? Uh, this is uh, Mallory. Oh, is this your friend from work? Uh, what was that? Do you guys have some sort of history, or were you dating, or were you dating when we started dating? No. Don't lie to me. W well, I'm not. It's, it's just me. <laughs> So uh, I think you'll find that we're very likely to use uh, avoidance as a strategy. We're likely to try and avoid certain situations that are uncomfortable for us, and that motivates us to do things. <laughs> the next one is the uh, commitment. Uh, you might not be able to read that. This is a father who wrote 826 notes to his daughter after he was diagnosed with cancer as part of the Twitter campaign for the Because I Said I Would uh, movement. How many of you have heard of the movement? Nobody. OK. Uh, it's, it's a fantastic movement. I think that uh, having the integrity to follow through with this is an interesting thing. Uh, this particular motivation strategy works very well with me, in case you were wondering. Uh, my children use it on a regular basis, telling me, Dad, you promised you would read two stories tonight instead of one. OK, I'll read two stories. I will do it. Uh, the next one 
is consistency. Uh, I don't know if you know how long ago Aristotle wrote the we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is, an, uh, is a habit instead of an act. Uh, a long, long time ago, humans have been doing this idea of being consistent and following through and repetitive. It's a motivation for us because we believe that that leads to excellence. The next one, this one's for you, Cora, your cat picture. Uh, when you surrender something, when you concede something to someone, you're more likely to concede again. Uh, this happens in sporting events, and it happens whenever you concede something to someone else. Uh, oftentimes, we find out that we're in a position where we don't have very much to bargain with. Uh, the next one is fear. A little bit of an inside joke here um, <clears throat> for all of you Whovians. Uh, we do things out of fear very often. Uh, sometimes we're afraid of looking bad. Maybe I'm afraid of, you know, nobody laughing at any of my jokes today. <laughs> but uh, it, it's a motivator for us. Uh, also, greed. How many of you would work 10% harder for 10% more salary? I'd probably try. I'll be honest. What's that? Depends on which part of the 10% you're looking for, right? How about just 10% more salary in general? All right, and then the next one is merit, or your rights. You deserve this. You deserve this brand new car. How many of you heard that in ads? All the time. Do you really deserve it? I don't know. That's kind of a, a tenable situation there. Uh, momentum. We tend to like to do the same things that we've always done. How many of you park in the same parking spot at work every day? You guys are liars if you're not raising your hand. I park in the same spot every day. <laughs> okay, you park at home. Uh, obligation. I don't even know what deck this is from, the night of obligation. But we do things because we're obliged to, sometimes because we're legally obliged to or morally obliged to. Magic the Gathering. Okay, Magic the Gathering. Thank you, those of you who play Magic the Gathering. Um, reciprocation. If I do something for you, you're far more likely to do something for me. And then uh, this one's scarcity. I don't know if you guys have seen this on Amazon. I looked it up yesterday. There are two Pearl cookbooks left in stock. You should order soon. Uh, that might not be the only motivating factor for you to purchase a great book, the Pearl Cookbook Second Edition. But uh, if you're on the fence and you realize there are only two left in stock, how many of you will buy that thing? Yeah, probably. It's a, oh, wait, wait, wait. You're trapped by societal convention. Look, we're in a fine dining environment. Everyone knows not to throw a scene in a fancy restaurant. That's right, you're trapped. Sit down. Oh, shoot. I see we're trapped by societal convention. So oftentimes we're also uh, bound by social norms or the pressures that are on us for the, the things that we do. We do what other people do. And you would think, oh, Seth, you're just showing me a Disney video of Phineas and Ferb. That doesn't happen in real life. Well, yes, it does. The gentleman in the elevator now is a candid star. These folks who are entering, the man with the white shirt, the lady with the trench coat, and subsequently one other member of our staff will face the rear. And you'll see how this man in the trench coat. <laughs> tries to maintain his individuality. But little by little. He looks at his watch, but he's really making an excuse for turning just a little bit more. To the wall. Now we'll try it once again. Here's the candid subject. Here comes the candid camera staff, three of them at least. And uh, this man has apparently been in groups before. We're going to cut that a little bit short so that we can uh, make time. Uh, they actually did a couple more experiments where they had uh, people taking their hats off and turning to the side and then turning back, and people would follow it all the way through. 
you wouldn't believe the kinds of things you will do because other people have done them. But to wrap it up, let's talk a little bit about the story time. So for the reward system situation that I, that I talked to you about, I called up this company because I wanted them to return ownership of this particular account that I had access to to someone else. I called up and I said, look, I'm trying to make things better. I know that I'm not the rightful owner of this. I'd like you to transfer it to someone else. Uh, here you go, this is the person that it belongs to. The person on the phone said, I'll go talk to my supervisor, clear it with the supervisor, and transfer it away. Uh, the world is a better place, although probably not safer because of that. There was no real validation that occurred there, so I could have just transferred it in a different direction, but okay. Uh, as far as the experience in the home improvement store, I was very flustered. It was very awkward to be the guy who someone shouted out and said, you, you shot that man. There was blood everywhere. Uh, I didn't actually do that, and uh, I vehemently denied it, but it also made me make my purchase quite fast. Uh, in the case of the push pins, every person that I presented that to took one. I didn't have to say a word. Uh, there were several people who said, why are you giving me this? And I said, I didn't give you anything. I just held it out there. There were several people who said, why do I have this? And the, the, the process jumped all the way through to the, what's going on? Uh, and then lastly, the do not move thanks management sign stood in the hallway for six months. We actually moved it in front of the boss's office for a couple of weeks to the point where she had to like waddle around it to get into her office every single day. Not once did she think, I'm the management. How does this even happen? <laughs> So uh, while you're using social engineering in your life, uh, I'd like to suggest a couple of things as far as ethics. You should think carefully. Social engineering is something that we do every day. You do to me, I do it to you, you do it to your families and friends, and it's not necessarily bad, but it can be bad. So I want you to think carefully about it and think carefully about the way that people are trying to interact with you. Uh, we all deserve better. All of us deserve something that is different than what we've got right now. I want you to avoid the traps that you could potentially fall into and help other people avoid traps as well and tell them how this is supposed to work. I want to help you to improve your lives and your communication. I want you to be able to make a difference in your own lives and the lives of other people. But it is your responsibility. I can't make this decision for you. I can't make your situation better. I can't help you to understand social engineering more than just get up here and talk about it. And there are not enough people helping, so I need some people to help. Will you do me a favor, or do yourself a favor? Will you help me? How many of you will help me by using social engineering for good causes in your life. Raise your hand. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, who is raising your hand right now. Uh, and for those of you who aren't raising your hand, thank you for getting started right away. <laughs> That's it. Thank you very much.